My name is Plenipotentiary Judge David Hyphen Winfolk Colin Miller. I punctuate my name because it makes me a fact and not an adjective pronoun fiction. I'm here to introduce to you to a program to bring this planet out of its adverb or world for 8,500 years into a correct sentence structure, communication syntax organization. All 250 countries worldwide have been under this adverb verb guise by the Universal Postal Union, Bern, Switzerland, established in 1873, better known as the New World Order. This technology has been perfected and misinformation. Privileged few are allowed to go free from committing crimes and others are slapped with serious fines, prison terms for absolutely nothing. When you go looking for case law on the correct sentence structure communication syntax, you will not find anything. You have to be competent enough to understand what the correct sentence structure communication syntax means in order for you to have the knowledge to win your lawsuit. Correct the language that is wrong. The syntax is now on the table. We will write the contracts, the treaties, the trusts, the constitutions, so that the people of the world all know where they stand. And if they know where they stand in a mathematical procedure of communications, written frontwards and backwards, so that no matter how they look at it, there is no subjective interpretation as to what it means or how it is set. And so with this level of accuracy, we are going to change this world. We are going to bring it together under one world order of correctness, just like mathematics. And we're going to use prepositional phrases and we're going to do it in the correct manner. So you go through three stages in life. Your first stage is you do not know what you do not know. No one was aware of syntax until you saw this program. Once you saw it, you were aware of what you did not know, which means you didn't know about the math interface on language. For 8,500 years, the entire population of the planet Earth in 5,000 languages did not know about the math interface on syntax. You were all taught when you were in fifth grade in school, never start a sentence with a prepositional phrase and never end a sentence with a prepositional phrase. Well, if you don't end a sentence with a prepositional phrase, you've got a dangling participle verb as an answer, which means your sentence is incomplete. Now, when the government writes their instructions on most of their forms, they don't use adjectives. They only use adverb, verb, adverb, verb, adverb, verb throughout the entire sentence structure. The human mind is really unique in its ability to use deductive reasoning and logic to create the correct sentence structure communication syntax. So you got to have the knowledge to understand what is being said because they have a code. No law or fact shall be tried in court. That is their law. That is their oath. Every judge, barrister, lawyer, attorney, worldwide, all countries, all languages square to this because for 8,500 years language has been bastardized. It is adverb verb illusion. An, act, A-C-T. All words that start with a vowel. A, E, I, O, and U are followed by two consonants means no contract. You're going to say, where do I find that rule? Look up every word in the dictionary. It starts with a vowel and two consonants. And the, all the synonyms that reflect that word, and you will find a no contract, a negative condition of state for every single word. In 4700 BC, Pharaoh said, so it is written, so it shall be done. There was a reason for that, because oral contracts cannot be seen or proven. Because of the argument, did you hear what I said, what I meant, what I said, when I said, what I meant, what I said? If you don't see it written, you can't prove it. When you write a contract, you go into court, you have a syntax document. Every single sentence is its own independent court as you make an argument. We're not dealing with 150 to 1 variables in an oral conversation, so your paperwork is going to speak for you. It isn't what's written here. I'm writing to show you how many ways I can write it to show you the variables, but when I speak it in one terminology, which one of the 150 variables up here that I just say to you? You don't know that. And because you don't know that, you're going to make a presumption, opinion, presumption, guess, perjury, a lie. How many different mistakes can you make? That's only three words. Try doing it with a lawsuit with 30,000 words on it. What do you think your variables are here? You're talking about terabyte to the terabyte power of variables. You, you can't get to a fact. If you can't have a fact, what are we doing? We're lying to each other. Technology brings us to a position of accuracy that cannot be argued. In the court room is a building. That is not the document on the piece of paper. When you write a lawsuit, the paper that you have, this is the court. And of all the two million words in the English language, we've got 720 words that are syntax. That's it. Pretty simple. Average person has a 12,000 word vocabulary. You only need 720 to learn syntax. And in 99% of the cases, you use less than 50 different words in an entire lawsuit to win your case. 
It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. When it's, it's so simple. Once you get it, it's mathematical. This is the court. This is the contract between you and the judge. The courtroom is irrelevant. The seals that are hanging on the walls are irrelevant. This flag is the correct sentence structure communication syntax flag, which advertises that this is correct. You place a postage stamp up on your corner. You sign across it. That makes you the postmaster transporting the vessel of the document to the clerk of the court, which is the port of the court. She puts her stamp on it. When she puts her stamp on it, you sign your name across her stamp, making you a postmaster of not only your paperwork and your vessel, now you're in contract with the port authorities of the court, because this is a courthouse, which is a foreign vessel in dry dock, so you've entered a foreign vessel, now you're the postmaster and clerk of a foreign vessel in dry dock. Now you've got a 24 karat gold bonded document that has to go in the court. But if you're going to sign the stamp on the front, you have to also endorse the back of the top of the cover page because that's called an endorsement. How many of you can cash a check at the bank without endorsing your check? Nobody. You're going to use your navigator stamp. Your navigator stamp has two bars through the dollar sign. You have your dollar signs come in two forms. This is a Federal Reserve note and that's a gold certificate. In the United States since 19 the red fox stamp was the only one that was published with two bars through the dollar sign. And that was published on the 2nd of November 1999 when the United States ended its third bankruptcy and became sovereign. By bringing communication skills down to a math problem, we remove the ability of an individual to lose his temper or maintain an argument. What we're doing here in syntax is we're showing you that the Bible is written in the Quran, in the Jewish Bible, and all of these different communications worldwide are written in adverb verb. They've left the words out. Why do they leave the words out? Because they can control you. So by learning syntax, you can go back and put the missing words in. In now time, you can remove the prefixes and the suffixes, which are the past and the future, and go to the root words. Then find a root word that means now time information, not the future, not a word that means no contract. If you go through any Bible phrase and you see a word that starts with a vowel and two consonants, get a book of synonyms, look up all the synonyms, and list those down, and put those in, and then put the correct preposition phrase in front of that word. You will learn how to build a sentence correctly from that phrase. And that's why this technology scares the courts. Because no law, which is a negative condition, and no fact, is the only thing that gets tried in court. If you know what syntax is, you can make a mathematical choice. You have better pieces of information to make better decisions to be good. And then if somebody with evil wants to come at you with an illusion called adverb verb, you can say, that's a lie, and I can prove it. It all comes down to who you are, what you know, and what you put on your documents to come into court. On the back of my business card is the whole procedure how to prosecute judges and attorneys. It's already written there for you. You've never had the correct sentence structure communication syntax treaty on any land contract or mortgage in the history of this country's writing. It's going to be fixed when enough people are educated and you vote in syntax. We're not here to break the system. We're here to educate and correct. When I originally said to my mom and dad, I'm going to go out in the world and I'm going to teach this, they said, don't complain about the government because you don't have anything to replace it with. You can't tell somebody he's a liar if you don't have the truth in your hand. Or what my truth was, because I was misled. When you guys learn it, it just opens up your whole world. You can see a lie. You have x-ray vision over everything. Nobody can screw around with you anymore. The cops won't stop you. The courts don't want you in there. There's nothing wrong with a new world order that's correct where nobody can go to war anymore because you all know how to do things correctly. Having the Masonic teachings is no different than any of the religions in the world. They teach you the difference between good and evil, how to manage people. They're the ones been pulling the strings on the New World Order for 8,500 years. For every 97 followers, you've got three chiefs. It's always 3% manages 97%. That ratio hasn't changed since the caveman. And the cream always floats to the top. The syntax separates the wheat from the chaff. There isn't anybody anywhere on this planet today, I don't care how high up in the Illuminati they are, that I can't prove they lied. And I don't have any restrictions as to how high up I go. They still can't take their lie and shove it down our throats because we've proved the lie, we've proved the fact. These are the parts of speech. There's only 10 of them. 
The adverb is used more in language worldwide than any other syntax of communications. And the adverb is a modifier. Also remember a vowel and two consonants. The adverb operation of syntax is a no contract issue because you're modifying the condition of a fact. If you're going to modify something, that's perjury because it's no longer the original fact. When you take a fact and you modify it with an adverb, it becomes what's called a gerund verb, which means a noun used as a verb. It's still a lie. It goes back to a math problem. Is 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27, right? So if I have a fact times a fact times a fact, I'm going to get a fact. But if I do 3 times 3 times 3 times 0 equals 0. Or if I divide, it's still going to be 0. Because a fact times a fact times a fact times a lie equals a lie. There's your math interface on add, subtract, multiply, and dividing. You can have a sentence with, let's say, 30 prepositional phrases completely done correctly and take the word for out instead of for the witness's knowledge, the witness's knowledge, and then go ahead and write 29 prepositions in the correct order in the sentence, but because you dropped the first four, now you've got an adverb, adjective, pronoun all the way to the end of the sentence, and you've lost all prepositional phrases because you committed a lie to start the sentence, therefore you've lost everything. You can't make any mistakes in this technology. The math will not support it. We use the math to go and check it frontwards and backwards. When you write a sentence backwards, you have to use the opposite prepositions. Every sentence we write, starts with a preposition for, you have two verbs, is and are, and the word that follows the verb is the word with. These positions of where these prepositions and articles take place are very unique because every sentence is a complete court hearing. You gotta follow the rules in every sentence. And you can't violate them. You make one mistake in a whole entire document and you made a presumption before the fact it proves you don't know what you're doing. Don't do something by yourself. Always work as a team. I don't care. The more people you got in your team, the better. Because then you got more years of experience to check. That's why law firms do not have a lawyer working alone. He always has five or ten other lawyers reading and signing his papers to say he did it right. The only word that can follow a pronoun is an adverb or a period. When you take two nouns and you put them together, black pen. Black is a fact, pen is a fact. But black colors the pen. Therefore, the black now becomes an opinion. Is this a charcoal pen? An ebony pen or a black pen. See, I can have there's 1,200 shades of black. So what shade is it? Well, it's subjective interpretation as to what it means. So therefore, it's an opinion. Like he has a red shirt on. Trying to explain color red to a blind person that's never seen color. Impossible. So your opinion of an adjective to color something or to modify something is impossible. Therefore, your opinion, presumption, modification has no bearing with the facts of what you're trying to do. I can change the value of any word I want based on where I place it and knowing what the value of syntax is. When you're dealing with an illusion, the subjective interpretation of where you put value or the weight of that word, where you put the emphasis on that word, is going to make a determination how it is. Adjective, coloring. Adjective always modifies the pronoun. Adverbs modify the adjective, which modifies the pronoun. Pronoun is any word that stands alone. Pen is a pronoun because there's no contract to make a determination as to what this means. The position is the terms of what your contract is. And once you have your terms of your contract, established, we then can have the lodial ownership, which is original. And with these two together, we now have a fact. And once we have a fact, it will become the positional lodial fact phrase. And then you have past time. Past time would be words that end in ed, or the adverb from, or the prepositional phrase from. Either way, you are removed from now time. There is no such thing as the past or the future. There is only now time. You will always be in now time. The future is a crapshoot. Hasn't happened yet. We'll figure that out when we get there. So it doesn't happen. And the conjunction is and and or. Again, and and or you have to define. It's not a presumption. The word and by itself is not a conjunction because it doesn't attach to anything. It's a pronoun. Or is the same thing. It's a pronoun unless you take jurisdiction for it. Every word that you use on your papers, you must define those. You want to and and or as a conjunction and it is and are as a verb, you have to separate a definition under your abbreviations and say these words mean these things and put it right up there at the beginning of the document. That way a judge can't say that's going to be used for the and. If I say for the and, now you've made a noun out of it. Or the and. Does an adverb making and a verb? I change it again. Take jurisdiction for how you use it. We start every sentence with for because we found it was the strongest preposition to start a sentence because it takes you into an argument.
takes you into the facts. Of was then used as the for of the effect. We only have two prepositional phrases in front of the verb. Then you have to define whether or not the possessive knowledge that you've claimed is a plus or minus. Are you looking for a reward or a damage? These are your nouns. Author, contract, terms, claim, fact, and claimant's knowledge. You can put those any place, move all the terms around, and the sentence will still mean the same thing. So there's six different ways you can write the sentence forwards, and six different ways you can write it backwards, and it will still say the same thing. You know you did it correctly. Advertise syntax on open television or radio or the internet to create awareness of the syntax and the condition of language and then have it voted in. And once it's voted in, then the government will have to change because it's the will of the people where 51% are going to make changes. Correct sentence structure, communication, syntax, 